How's my hair? Quiet on the set. Yeah, it's all fake anyway. <laughs> This is a message to anyone who has teenage sons. I came down here to work on this. And my son was working, we're working on his, uh, what is it, Nissan Frontier. There's the front end, there's the front bumper. And it's not in the right spot. He got the garbage bag out of the garbage can. So I think he can be taught. Here's some, you know, stuff that he was sanding down his fender flares, which are, one of them is here. He was welding, apparently, because there's his helmet with the lens on the ground. Perfect. If you have a, you know, maybe you're a new dad. And you just had a little baby son that's so cute and can't imagine wanting to kick him out of your house. Um, he got the broom out. I'm not sure. I don't know if we went over how to use that tool. But if you if you just had your little baby boy, you have a few options. Do you have a brother or sister that you like a lot? You could just drop your new baby boy off with them, and or realize that you will have to learn patience. And, uh, I don't know, acceptance of utter failure, mostly on your part, because I feel like I led the boy astray, I believe is the word. Um, this must be my fault. Anyway, I'm going to clean this pigsty up. All right, so we're going to tear into this 12 bolt, which I purchased off of Marketplace. It was a it was used uh, drag racing. It's got really long studs. It's got 456 gears in it. Not what I need. Now, this will go in the El Camino, obviously. And the El Camino, when, I, when we put it in the garage, had a 10 bolt. And I know what you're thinking. Like, well, if it's a real SS, it wouldn't have a 10 bolt. And I don't know, there's a backstory on this car that I'm not sure if we got into. I owned this car when I was 20 to 22, somewhere. I bought it way north New York, uh, like Johnsville. So I bought it because my 85 El Camino that I loved, uh, that, I, that was my first car, I blew the motor. And I was going to have to put some money into it because I didn't really work on my car myself. So I decided if I'm going to put any money into it, I may as well get the exact car that I wanted. Um, which was 68 through 72 El Camino. But my brother had a 72, which is what I have now uh, that I drive. But this is a 71. Same, same car. So... I decide, you know, at like 19, that, well, we'll just get rid of this car. I think I sold it for like 450 bucks. And we'll buy this car. And then we'll fix this one up. Well, I don't know. It didn't really work out that way at all. So, this car was in a garage that me and a buddy, two buddies, Scotty and Rob, they had cars. We were all going to just hang out in this garage that we rented for like 400 bucks. Uh, we were going to build hot rods. That was it. Uh, we, we had no clue. I don't even think we had tools, really. Um, and immediately, the car, when, the further we got into it, the worse it was. Again, I'm like 21 now. I can't do this. So before I took it out of the garage, there was this guy, Uncle Buddy who had a 64 El Camino, and he wanted to buy my posse rear end. So, you know, me thinking, well, whatever, I'm, I'm just literally going to park this car at my brother's yard uh, where he keeps his trucks and it'll rot. So I got like 250 bucks for, you know, a working, driving 12-bolt. 
bad decision, but you know, at 21, you're doing a lot of things that make your brain a little slow. Uh, so I sell the Posse. So it did not have a Posse because he put his 10 bolt from the 64 Chevelle into my, this car. Now, this car, again, I said that I <clears throat> bought it when I was like 21. So I get rid of the car. I bring it to my brother's yard. One day it's gone. I assume, you know, my brother was cleaning up the yard. He had somebody, you know, a company come and scrap it. And it's just gone. Until Steve goes and buys the 68 SS off of a guy who is a friend of my brother's uh, in the next town over. Well, he, I'm like, Steve, I think that's my car. And sure as heck, it was. So, you know, it's like, if you set something free and it comes back or something it's meant to be, I don't, there's a, there's a saying. So when he went to buy the 68, there were also two other El Caminos on the property. So Steve being Steve, which is funny. He likes to buy things in threes. It's just his number. Uh, he said, all right, well, let's do this. I'm going to take care of all your El Camino problems. I want that one, that one, that one, and every part that you have for an El Camino. And the guy said, fine, if you can get these things, if you take these things out of my life, you can have them for that. So it was a good deal. Let's build it like I wanted to when I was, you know, 22, 21. And that's what we're doing. All right, so I started tearing into this. I was just gonna drain the fluid, check some things out. I know for a fact, because of the stains on the floor, that we have a leak and the, pin, the pinion seal is leaking, for sure. So that's that. There's also a lot of play in this. I can't, I can't get it to move. Yeah, see that? That does not seem right. And again, this is, the guy said, uh, the guy I bought it off of said it was a friend of his. It's always a friend of theirs, right? They can never, but no, he was a good guy. But it was a friend of his. He wanted the gears because he had like a, I think he had like a, I don't even know, like some Delta hot rod. Like it was crazy. Big tubbed out. Seven pounds of pressure in the slicks in the back. Um, I went to Jersey, bought that, bought this rather. Um, and it was a 12 bolt. And the numbers, which I can't seem to find, it should be right here. And the only thing I can find, which I don't know if it'll come out, there's like an R on there, but that's the only letter I a number I can find. Yeah, it looks like maybe I'll look. Maybe there's something there. I don't know, but it's supposed to be a 1971 12 bolt rear end. So I'm like, sweet, let's go get it. So I bring it home. I'm cleaning it up. I notice it's leaking out of the seal there. We got to do that. These studs are ridiculous because again, it was drag raced. I go and take the pan off, and I get my little pan to catch all the oil and that's all it came out now again it was leaking for probably years i don't think it was ran dry but i do want to switch the gears i do want to fix the seal or i have to fix the seal there's some things some broken brake line clips i want to switch out the studs i want to clean everything up the, the pitting that will match the frame perfectly. So when I spin this, oh God, it burns up right there. This way it runs fine. What's wrong with that thing forward? If I go backwards, oh, nope, there's something, there's the preloads off, or I don't, we're gonna we're gonna tear into this. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna rebuild it. I don't know why I'm so confident. 
in the fact that I could do this. Well, there is, I did rebuild the power steering uh, gear box. There's going to be, on the maiden voyage, there'll be two major, you know, systems of the car that'll grenade because I thought that being a cabinet maker, I'd be fine, totally qualified to do such a thing. But if the power steering gearbox goes, I got to get towed. So if the power steering gearbox goes and the rear end goes, I'm still getting towed. That'll be fine. Then I know exactly what I need to replace. I got to get, the, I'm going to take the axles, the carrier out. Well, I'll take the axles out first, pull the carrier, pull the bearings off the carrier, look for any worn spots, make sure that the carrier is reusable. That would be great. Because before I order the gears, if I need a carrier too, I'd just rather buy a whole, you know, kit. And as long as the bearings on either end of the carrier haven't worn in or uh, spun, which you can tell there'll be a groove on it and it'll have eaten into the, you know, housing of the carrier. As long as all that looks good, then we're golden. We'll just buy new gears, replace those, uh, you know, and then we'll systematically go through and reinstall everything. We'll put it all back together. I've, uh, I know that it's a, I know that there, it's a very, you know, the, uh, the tolerances are pretty, pretty close, but it's, it's kind of one of those things that it makes sense to me. I deal with close tolerances at work. I think it'll be fine. And again, just like the gearbox, if I don't do it, well, I know something's wrong with it. So somebody's got to do it. And, um, this is hot rod. Supposed to be relatively simple to take this out. There's a slide pin that goes from the top through that hole, through this space, holding the axles or stopping the axles from sliding in. And the axles are held on with that little, there's a little C-clip there. So the pin's supposed to slide right out. You take a bolt out of the side of the carrier which in this case was broken. And it really caused a nightmare. So there's the pin out. However, there is about an inch and a half of the pin that I had to cut off because for the past hour, I've been pounding this pin from the top with a half inch extension through the spider gear, through the void, so I can push the axle in and get that C-clip out. Because I can't remove the carrier, I can't take these bolts off and just pop this out until the axles are out. So the one axle is out. There's the spline. There's the C-clip. Axle doesn't look very good. It's out. Okay. It's out. So this may be a little bit more in-depth as to uh, what I ran into. This bolt here goes in, comes out. That's what holds this pin together. Now this pin slides in here. Let me get a pointer slides all the way through coming out that hole the axles actually come in here and they're not able to slide in any further because the pin stops it so now like I said so you take this bolt out right 
Boom. And this bolt goes through a hole in here. The threads are on the top, which are only threaded here. So there's no threads on the bottom. Oh, there's the bottom. This had to get cut because it was hitting the inside of the case. And that, it got destroyed. I mean, I was beating on it. In fact, I was beating on it with this. And that's what happened. I mean, we were arguing. Sometimes, sometimes hot rodding is like being married to a really good looking woman who just doesn't like you. Because it's, well, it's, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. If it does, give me a heck yeah in the comments. So now I should be able to just take this totally useless uh, extension and I'll just finish her, finish her off, drive that through. My chances of reusing this entire carrier I'm starting to think hmm, maybe not so all right so now we're just going to keep disassembling bearing puller for that but right now I'm going to try to get this carriage out I'm just putting zip ties through the springs uh, as many as I can because when this pops out I'm just gonna kind of pry it up like this over here and then it's going to pop out and, and then we'll look at the spider gears and uh you know just keep checking this carrier see if we can reuse it there's a lot of play in the in the bearings for sure so it's a good thing we're that we're going through all this although i am still keeping track of everything uh, this were, these were the shims on either side of it, of the carrier, while it was in the housing, driver's side, passenger side. If we can reuse the carrier, um, actually I just realized uh, with a different gear, it'll be a different thickness, which is going to throw everything off. So it's probably silly, but whatever, maybe not. Good morning. It's another day working on the 12 bolt. Got a lot of stuff done. We got it uh, sandblasted, almost completely torn down. But doing so, brake line clips. This one was on there. But, you know, they only get so many bends. This one was broken already. So I decided to. Make up some new ones. I think you could probably order them, but you know, it's not about ordering everything. I figured I'd make them myself. They seem simple enough. There is still one intact, but that's what they should look like. So what I did, I took a piece of 18 gauge sheet metal and you do recognize that color. It's a part off of Mr. Jones. He just keeps giving. So this is what we made the, the blocks up out of. And what I did, I just made myself a little drawing with some measurements, made up that template. And then to get the little curve, I drilled everything out. Kind of looks like my Stewart's milk card at this point, but 
So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this out, this hole here. I'll spot weld to the axle tube and we should be fine. All right, I'm gonna cut this out. All right, got them all cut out. Uh, nice and easy. We just need to form it on this end because this skinny flap is what actually bends up around the brake line and holds it in like that is what we're looking for, which I know that this one's gonna break as well by that line right there. So I made one for that too. So I'm gonna put a quarter inch uh, diameter bend in it. So what I did, I just got a piece of quarter inch flat bar and I just kind of ground it down. I was thinking about maybe welding a quarter inch bolt here and then forming it on that, but this only took a few minutes and it's not perfect, but honestly, it'll be fine. They're all mangled on the original, so I think it'll be fine. So I'm gonna clamp that piece in there and basically hammer it over. Okay. Working on the rear coil springs, which I would like to reuse. And because I believe they're fine. Um, but they're powder coated, they're chipped, rust spots. So we're gonna clean them up, minty. And one of the benefits of being divorced is that I am gonna heat it up to 500 degrees in the oven which I hear will disintegrate the powder coating. I'm not sure if it works. Look at that, getting there. So, doesn't smell bad yet. No kids are home, so Cora won't be yelling at me. All right, so here's the spring. <clears throat> Fresh out of the oven. Supposedly it just rubs right off. Oh my God, it really does. Oh my God, look at that. I was wire wheeling them. Look. Just flakes right off. All right, so I'll finish cleaning this, these up. The second one's in the oven. I figured the house is wrecked. Tomorrow I gotta call Serve Pro and have them come and yeah, make it like it never even happened. But like, I mean, I'm literally hardly touching it. All right, so it works. However, why I didn't think to just put it in the Weber, crank that up to 500 degrees. But if you put powder coat and something that'll make it 500 degrees, it will come off with zero effort. All right, so this is where we are right now. Frame is looking nice. Backing plates redone. Brake cylinder new. Got new bearings, new seals, grade A bolts. The, uh, shock bolt there these were remade and popped on and as you can see yes it's it's pitted but so is the frame so that's fine we've got races installed it's completely ready to start putting the Pinion gear in and, you know, gear the carrier with the new, we went with 373s on here. Oh, yeah, I can, I've got those. Um, we'll pound them in later, but 
here's the frustrating part of hot rodding. Okay, so I, that, this is the new gear pinion. I ground these guys out. These are the old bearings. So I can set my um, pinion depth without, you know, uh, ruining the crush collar. So here's the yoke, as we all know, it goes on here. In the kit that I got with the carrier, they give you a brand new nut. So that's awesome. This was the nut that was on the gears that were in there. As you can see, it's a flange nut. They did not send a washer for this. So, if I was to thread this on, let me see, can I get it? It needs a washer, obviously. Why they wouldn't send it? I don't know. It's crazy to me. And then I thought, all right, well, I'll just reuse this one. Except, you know, I was smacking this with a hammer to get this off. And then I was smacking it even more because as you're grinding these out, these bearings, so that they slip, <clears throat> you're putting it on and off. It's hot. You go to get it and it gets stuck right there. And I mean stuck, like don't even try to, so, you know, pull it off. You have to, so I got, I'd have to put the nut on and I didn't want to wreck my new one. I should have put this guy on. I didn't want to hit this with a hammer. And it threads perfectly up until right, right there's messed up. So I ordered a nut, a $12 or a washer rather, I'm sorry. A $12 washer, which I was planning on having this all together on Sunday, which would have actually happened, but we are just going to, there's little things we can do, you know, we can pop these bumper stops in. All right, so now... We're going to slip the ring gear onto the carrier. I'm whispering because it's still very early. So I've got the barbecue running. And we're just going to heat that ring gear up to 200 degrees. Which will enable it to slide right down tight. We will thread these guys in. A few of them just to hold it and let it cool. It'll shrink back down tight, and life should be good. All right, so the ring gear is on. And now I have to torque down these bolts to 55 foot-pounds. So in order to get torque on this, because there's no real great way to hold it, I put it in the clamp taped everything up to keep it safe. I really don't feel good about this, but I couldn't even get 30 foot pounds on without really torquing it or adding a lot of force down, pinching it between the plate and the ram. Um, so I went on YouTube and this uh, channel, Bleepin' Jeeps, I believe, had a genius idea. So let me shut this off and we'll set that up. All right, so this is what you do. And it is awesome, I think. I don't know, I haven't done it, so. But what we wanna do is we wanna work on the, on the carrier and ring gear like this. So being that the carrier's out, the axles are out. So they bolt the axle to a tire that you can stand on. And then you slip on your carrier. And voila. I mean, how nice is this gonna be? It's right there. Click, click, click. Standing on the tire. 
if you're going to build a lot of rear ends, you can make a little jig right on the floor. And you could slip the, uh, the studs in. But I'm just going to break out one of the tires, put that on. I'll tighten all these down. I don't really think we need to see that. So I'll be back after this is all done. All right, carriers installed in the casing shimming. Shims go on the gear side, on the outside of the race, and on the other side. That is a technical term. This is the other side. So I've got my dial indicator here. And we're going <clears> to, <throat> we need to check the backlash. As you can see, when I move it, just a little bit of pressure on this side, which will be filled up by shims. But for just getting us close, we can zero it out. So we have 4.5. We want between 6 and 10. So we will take this out and we will give ourselves a little bit. We'll take some shim out of this side. Sliding it over on the pinion, giving more backlash until we have the right number. So when I get it all done, we'll check back in, we'll test our pattern, and hopefully we can be done with this. I've torqued all the ring bolts on. First to 30 pounds, which is one dot on the side of the bolt. And then to 55 foot pounds. So each bolt has two dots. Loctite, ready to go. We'll shim. We'll test our pattern and then we'll put it together for real. All right, I shim the other side. Both sides of the carrier are shimmed. And I would say, what is that? 0 0.0075. So that is within spec. So these are the shims, I didn't get into it. Unfortunately, Yukon does not label the size of the shim. And they're really not the same either. I'm, I'm assuming these are all supposed to be the same, but they're not. So I just went through, measured all of them, put them in their little piles. That way you can, you know, basically do simple math on paper and figure out what shims you need, pop it in, it's good. All right, we painted up the, the teeth, and in all honesty, I don't think that we can do any better than that. I mean, I've never done it before, so, but everything I've seen, that is kind of exactly the pattern that we are looking for. Centered, keel to toe, Coast drive, everything's good. So now we will put the actual bearings in the pinion because I had to grind them down to do a test. We have to put the crush sleeve in. When I take the, the pinion out, we do have to talk about something. It was a bit frustrating starting the process. Um, just differences in the way that it was made. I had to add some shims in a spot that I wasn't sure if we could, but I checked with the manufacturer and everything's fine. So, so this is, uh, I'm going to button it up and I think the next video will probably be putting the rear end in the car and 
it's underneath there because it was getting so dirty the frame but we'll put the motor in the transmission in measure for the drive shaft and we will have a complete roller pretty exciting stuff the plan is the winter project is going to be here actually this will be my winter all right great thanks for watching